What's up guys, I'm Rustin from RustMertech.com and this is another tutorial in assembly programming. In this class I'm going to talk about defining and using procedures. So let's get started. Now we, we've already used procedures before. This is the main procedure here. This is the startup procedure. Now we can create our own procedures. But uh, the main procedure is a little bit different. With the main procedure, we don't need to uh, have this RET to end the procedure. Since it is the main procedure and this is the startup procedure, it doesn't need that. Now, we can create our own procedures. We just have to first uh, give our procedure a name. I'll call mine uh, blue and um, hit space. Then we type in PROC, like the main procedure. Hit enter a few times. Then we have to type in RET. Then we hit enter, then we hit backspace a few times, then we type in our procedure name, which is blue, then end, and P for end procedure, right? So since we created a new procedure, we have to have this RET before the uh, blue end P or before the pr procedure name end P or else it won't work. With the main procedure, you don't need to have this RET because this is a startup procedure. Now, let's talk about what procedures are. If you guys are using object-oriented programming languages like Java or C++, uh, they're, they're either called methods or functions, right? They're basically a subroutine within the program, a little program within the program that, uh, that'll help you do certain things. Now, these things, these procedures, they have limitations. Like, let's say you want to jump from one procedure to the other. like you have a label here let's let's say you declared a label which you called green right up here technically you can't use the jump instruction from one label to the other let's say I have JMP here and our label name which is green technically it, it, it won't jump because it's a different procedure now th there's a way around it you can declare your label a global label and the way you do that is by having two colons instead of one next to the label name when you declare it. So now this is a global label and you can jump from anywhere in the program. But if you guys are using procedures, it's highly, highly recommended that you don't uh, jump from one procedure to the other or loop from one procedure to the other because you can mess up the runtime stack and it will be corrupted and your program will not work. So it's highly recommended you don't jump or loop from one procedure to the other. So yeah, that's how, that's how procedures pretty much work you can you can just cr create a procedure name you can put the procedure in anywhere in the program and it works like a miniature program and it does its own and each uh, let's say you have a really complicated program most complicated programs in assembly they have a lot of little procedures within them each procedure has its own task and it, and it just keeps things very organized and, and, and easy to understand and, uh, and you won't have as much errors as you would just by having one procedure. All right, guys, now I'm going to show you guys how to use the procedures and how to call them. We, we uh, call a procedure by using the call instruction. We return the value of a procedure by using the RET instruction. But let me just show you how that works. Let's delete this here and let's delete this jump here so now uh we have two procedures again we have the main and we have the blue right now how do how do i uh call the blue from the main i'll show you guys how to first let's let me move around some values let's move into ax the value of one right so when the program first starts it's going to move into ax value of one now i'm going to use the call instruction which is c-a-l-l -L, then hit space then we have to type in our procedure name which is blue right so we're calling blue. So what's going to happen is the program's going to start, right? We're in the main method. It's going to execute this line of code, which is moving to AX value one. AX is going to have a value one. It's going to go down to this next line of code, which is going to call the blue method. It's going to jump to the blue method, execute whatever's in the blue method. Then it's going to hit this return instruction. Then it's going to return back to the main method, but under uh, the call uh, instruction. So let, let's write something under the call instruction. Let's move into AX, let's say the value of three, right? So let's uh, let's move around some values in the blue procedure here. Let's move into AX, uh, let's say four, right? Move into BBX four. 
So we move into AX1, we moved into, let's say BX1 again. So let's change this to a BX instead of an AX. So let's make, make this a one. So again, from the top, the program is going to start. It's going to give AX a value of one. Then it's going to move down to this call instruction. It's going to call the blue method. So we're going to jump. This is not a jump, but it's going to move to wherever the 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 blue procedure is. Then it's going to start the code within the blue procedure. It's going to execute the code. So then it's going to it's going to move into AX the value of four. Then it's going to move into BX the value of four. It's going to get to this RET instruction for return. All right, what the RET instruction does? It just goes back to uh, the procedure you are in, where you use the call, and it'll start the the line of code underneath the call. So it'll then it will move into BX the value of one. So let's just test it out. So I'm going to hit emulate. Now I'm going to hit next step. The first step, we know that uh, we moved into AX the value of 1, right? So let's hit next step. Our next step is actually the call blues. So let's hit next. Now as you can see here, let's just maximize this here. As you can see here, it jumped straight to the blue uh, procedure, right? Now it's at the first line of code. So let's hit next step. Now it, it executed the first line of code in the blue procedure. Now our AX has a value of 4. Now let's hit next step. Now it did the second line of code in the blue procedure. Now our BX has a value of four. Now we're at the point where it's going to return back to the main uh, procedure, right? So RET is the return instruction. So let's hit next step. And as you can see from up here, it returned back to the main procedure. It started under the call instruction here. So now it's, it's going to execute move BX1. So now let's hit next step. It moved into BX the value of one. Now, now, now it's going to go to the first line of the blue procedure again, just because that's the, the way that the program falls. So let's hit next step. AX has a value of four because we moved into AX the value of four. Hit next step. BX has a value of four because we moved into BX four. Let's hit next step, and it should end the program there. So again, when we call a uh, procedure. It, it goes to, to that procedure, it executes whatever is in that procedure, as many lines of code that it is. Once it gets to this RET instruction, it'll go back to the original procedure right under the call instruction. So it'll execute whatever is under the call instruction. Then it, the program will continue normally. So then it'll, it'll, it'll work normally and just go to next line, next line, execute the next line, execute the next line. So yeah, that's how uh, procedures work. That's how we can call procedures, and that's how this RET instruction works. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rissin from RossMertech.com, and thanks for watching.